Hello, I am Miss Anne and welcome to Speedy Science. Each week in this program, we will do a fast and fun science activity that you can fit into your busy schedule. This week, we are going to be making our own bouncy balls. For this activity, you will need cups and a spoon. I am using disposable cups and spoons because this activity involves ingredients that you cannot eat. So make sure you use something that you can throw away. Glue, some cone starch, watercolor paint, you can also use food coloring if that's easier, womb water, and Burax laundry detergent. First, we're going to take one of our cups and add some cone starch. Next, we're going to add our Burex powder. Remember, you cannot eat Burex and you cannot put it in your mouth, so make sure that you do not put your hands in your mouth when doing this activity. And then, we're going to add our water. When you add the, two, the three together, it might bubble a bit, so then go ahead and start mixing. You want them to go ahead and kind of dissolve. You might feel the cream starch clump up, and that's okay, so just go ahead and keep mixing. Go ahead and set it to the side and take your other cup. Then we're going to go ahead and add some glue. And then go ahead and take your watercolor paint and add some drops into the glue. Because all of our ingredients are white, you're going to need more, to add more paint than you think you will in order to get a vibrant color for your ball. If you want to have a more pastel or lightly colored ball, just add a little bit of paint. Then go ahead and mix that in until the glue is completely and the paint are completely the same color. I'm making a pink ball, but you can make whatever color you like. See that nice pink color I'm going to have? Once they're mixed together, go ahead and add all of your cone starch liquid to your glue. You want the two to be completely together. Then go ahead and mix. When you mix, you'll notice that a clump starts to form. That's what you want, so go ahead and keep mixing until there's no liquid left and the entire thing is one big clump.
Now that our mixture is ready, we can go ahead and actually start forming a ball. This part of the activity can get very messy, so I recommend putting down either some paper towels, old newspaper, or other thing to protect your surface. And make sure you do this part of the activity in a place where a grown-up says it's okay to be messy. You also might want to have some extra paper towels to clean off your hands. So go ahead and take out your big clump and put it in your hands. It's okay if there's still some liquid left in the cup, but you want to make sure the vast majority of it is in a big clump. Then you're going to go ahead and start squishing and rolling your ball. Now right now, as you notice, there's a lot of liquid in here. When we're squishing and rolling, we want to get as much of that liquid out as possible. You might have to stop every once in a while to wipe off your hands, and that's okay. At this stage, your ball may feel a lot like a slime. And that's okay, because the more that we play with it, it's going to become less slime-like and turn more into a bouncy ball. You know your ball is ready when you hold it up to height, and when it comes and bounces, it maintains its shape and comes back up. As you can see, my ball has a little bounce. It's starting to work, but it's not there yet, so I'm going to keep playing with it and keep building it up. This process can take a while, so don't be surprised if it takes a long time. So now it seems that my ball is ready. And I know because when I hold it out sugar height and drop it down, it bounces back up enough where I can catch it. See? And the more you keep mixing it, the higher it will bounce. Another way you can increase the bounce is to put it in a circular shaped container like a plastic egg. And with the caregiver's permission, put it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. That will help it curl it and then it will bounce even higher after that. Isn't that cool? Now that we saw what happened, let's talk about why. Glue is made up of something called polymers. Polymers is when on a molecular level, the same different molecules repeat constantly in a chain. These chains just keep going and going and going. And when we add burex to the glue, we make those chains go in three different dimensions. This is the same way that slime works. And because we are adding the two together, we move those chains. But the reason our ball becomes a bouncy ball and not slime is because we also add a curve starch. Remember, when you're combining different ingredients, ingredients in chemistry and you're mixing them together, you're transforming the way they work on a molecular level to make other things. Isn't that cool? Be sure to email us pictures of your balls and tell us how they came out and send those emails to the Awesome Library's Eve Services email address. I can't wait to hear from you. Bye! Hello, I am Miss Anne, and welcome to this week's bonus activity. In today's video, we use glue, cone stretch, and burex laundry detergent to make a DIY bouncy ball. As you probably noticed, when we make our balls and put them down, very quickly they start to flatten out and you have to reshape them by squeezing them in your hands again. For this week's bonus activity, see if you can figure out a way to make something with the materials that you have in your house to help the bouncy ball retain its shape when you're not playing with it. Some ideas might be to put it with a caregiver's permission in an empty circular object like an egg, or maybe you can build something with sandwich bags and something to hold it together with tape. What ideas do you come up with? 
Be sure to email us and let us know. I can't wait to hear from you. Bye! Hello, I am Miss Ann, and now we are going to talk about some awesome books you can get from the Youth Services Department at the Alsop Marinette Park Public Library. Because today's science activity was all about a bouncy ball, these books are going to be about bouncing and jumping. Remember, to get books from our department, you can either come into the building and go downstairs and kick the books off the shelf, or you can place a hold online or over the phone for curbside pickup and home delivery. Our first book today is Bounce by Joreen Cronin. This book is a fun picture book all about different ways to bounce. You can bounce like a frog or bounce like a ballerina. This book is a very fun one to read because you can do the bounces along with the book and see all the different ways you can bounce. Our next book is Gymnastics Jump by C.C. Joven. This book is about Lily, who is attending a gymnastics meet for the first time. She loves to jump and bounce all around. This is a great book for anyone interested in gymnastics because it talks about all the different parts of a gymnastics meet. Our next book is Mighty Mike Bounces Back by Robert Skeeg and Mike Simmel. Mike has never been more excited than when his dad brings home a basketball for the first time. Mike instinctively takes to the spook and loves to play and wants to go to a basketball camp. But there's one small problem. Mike has epilepsy and he's worried that he might have a seizure in front of his friends or that he won't be able to play the same way the other kids can. But over the course of the camp, Mike learns how to challenge himself to make himself feel better and to get along and become a great basketball player. This is a really interesting story about life of epilepsy that's written by Mike Simmel, who is actually a player for the Harlem Wizards and has epilepsy in real life. Our last book today is The Secret History of Balls by Josh Chuckwink. This book talks about all the different types of balls we use in different sports, from basketballs and footballs to paintballs and handballs. It talks about everything you've ever heard of and goes into the history behind each ball, how they were invented, how we make them now, and the different rules that impact the games that we all love. Remember, these are just some of the books about bouncing that we have here at the Alsop Marinette Park Public Library's Youth Services Department. If you need help finding these or any other books, please call or email us at the Alsop Library's Youth Services email address, and we will be happy to assist you. I can't wait to hear from you. Bye!